Hello everyone, Chris Mew here and it's time for another FilmFX tutorial. Stay with me if you'd like to learn how to use splines to guide emotional liquids in real time by using Nodeworks GPU accelerated PBD liquids running on NVIDIA graphic cards. In this scene, I already have the source, spline and glass set up. You can see that the spline and source are already animated and to add a little bit more dynamic to the whole simulation. To make the initial scene setup easier, we have developed quick presets feature that, with just a few mouse clicks, automatically generates a PBD liquid starting setup tailored for your current workflow. Allow me to demonstrate. So I will select the source and the glass and then press the PBD liquid icon on the FumeFX toolbar. If we look at the PBD source node, we can see it already contains the box source object. The animated mesh option is enabled by default, which is what we want since the box is animated. The source type is set to volume, which is also correct because we are emitting from the entire volume of the box, not just from the surface. Now, moving over to the physics static collision node, its type is set to static, which tells the solver to treat the glass as an un unmovable object. In the physics sim node, gravity is already set, so if I scrub the time slider now, you can see liquid starting to flow out of the box in real time. I'll go ahead and reduce gravity a little bit. To 6.0 to make the flow a little bit slower. Now let me just switch the Nodeworks particle display to the point type and color mode to velocity. This makes it easier to see how the liquid is moving and the particles will be smaller. Next I'll add the spline force node and from the spline dialog, I'll pick the shape that we're going to use as the force source. If I scrub the time slider now, it's clear that the spline force is still too weak as the gravity force prevails. Before moving forwards, the fall of type is set to linear, which means the force decreases as particles move away from the spline and any particle that is closer than the range start and beyond the range end isn't influenced at all. So I want the liquid to be under a uniform force within a certain distance, so I set the fall-off type to range constant and set the range start to 0 and range end to 40. Now all the particles within the imaginary tube around the spline shape with radius of 40 will influence all the particles equally. By increasing the attraction, particles will be pushed towards the nearest point on the spline shape and overcome the gravity force. The, criti the critical part is that final spline curvature that bring a liquid directly into the glass is, requires a little bit stronger attraction force, so I'm going to focus on that part. Now, you see that if we set to small attraction force, the liquid is going to miss the glass. So, as I said, because of that final curvature, we need to use a little bit stronger attraction force and I'll set it to 7 to make liquid stick close to the spline. I'll also give liquid a little bit more push along the spline by increasing the direc direction force to 1.5. Now this looks uh, much better, but you can see that the particles are disappearing after reaching the end of the spline. That's because they're, they've been killed by the PBD liquid main kill plane. So I'll just move that kill plane further down 
So the particles are deleted only when they pass below our ground plane. To add even a bit more dynamic, I will add a rotation force of minus 1.3, which will rotate liquid in clockwise direction along the spline path. By wearing the rotation and the traction force, you can get different motion patterns along the spline. However, in this case, the attraction cannot be much lower as liquid, liquid won't follow the spline at the sharp final curve anymore. Now, under the physics liquid phase node, we can make a liquid feel a bit more cohesive by increasing the cohesion value. So, Increasing to 10, particles will stick much more together and the flow will look less chaotic. To stabilize the flow a little bit more, I'm going to increase damping and I'll also set the scale to 1.0 to adjust the overall feel of the, this milk and the glass scale. One more thing, by default, the spline force influence extends past the spline's last vertex that can pull on liquid that's already settled inside the glass. Now, to avoid that, I'll enable an limiter on the spline force so its influence stops exactly at the last point. Now, let's add a bit more liquid particles. We go inside the PBD liquid sim node and decrease the particle radius. I'll use the 0.3 to spawn a little bit more particles. By reducing the particle radius in the simulation, you're effectively increasing the total particle count. When you substantially raise the number of liquid particles, you will also need to increase the number of physics simulation steps to maintain stability and achieve comparable simulation quality. Since I don't want spline forces affecting splashes after they reach the glass, I will turn off the spline force at frame 196. After this frame, absolutely no spline force is going to be applied. The perfect note for this is the event timer. And by default, it uses simulation frame. Now also to reduce splashes, I'll go to the physics static collision node and decrease contact offset and, offset and rest offset and set them about 2.5 times smaller than the particle radius. Now this eliminates most stray splashes as collision between liquid particles and meshes are properly handled. The final step is to mesh this liquid by using the iSurf measure from the FilmFX toolbar. From within, pick the nodeworks and type the liquid to mesh only our liquid particles group. I'll switch the meshing mode to Tsubritson for a high quality surface because there may be a few particles scattered around the scene. To optimize the meshing, I'm going to add bounding box so that we mesh only what's relevant for our simulation. To limit the iSurf meshing area, you can adjust its position or change the bounding box size. Since the particle radius is 0 0.3, I'll set the particle radius and the measure to 0 0.4 and the grid spacing to 0 0.3. To make the surface a bit smoother, I'll increase the meshing threshold to 6. If you'd like to smooth the surface even further, iSurf provides lots of flexibility. Choose between various smoothing options 
and you can even create smoothing mask based on particle velocities which allow you to for example smooth stationary liquid but leave detail inside the fast moving flow. One amazing thing about PBD liquids is mass conservation. Even over thousands of, thousands of frames where the liquid volume remains constant. To demonstrate I'll extend the range frame to 400 and memory cache the simulation. Now as you can see the liquid level in the glass stays perfectly stable. There is no volume loss at all. So PVD liquids are a great choice, choice for tasks like this and can make you complete the project in a much shorter time frame. Now, Thank you for watching and feel free to leave us a comment below which tutorial you'd like to see next.